Oh, what's this? A gaming video that I'm doing? That I'm putting effort into doing a voiceover over? Oh, but Dave, I thought you did racing videos. Yeah, okay, I do racing videos mostly now. But I am still a gamer, and I do have some old gaming videos, even though they all suck, except for maybe the booster hunting ones, if you hated those people and you played Modern Warfare 2. But anyway, I'm here to talk about Crashtastic. Now, if you haven't heard about Crashtastic, it's an indie game. Uh, it's still in the alpha stages, so it's nowhere near complete. It's going up for Steam Greenlight right now, but it's basically a physics simulator type of game where you build a car or a rocket or whatever out of all these different length blocks, and you put some wheels on it, and then you complete some levels and challenges, or you can just try to make a really awesome crash. And if you're like me, then you'll make a car like this at the start, where it's really strong and rigid, so it can go really fast and smash into anything and have a semi-NASCAR-like roll cage where hopefully the cage stays intact with the driver while the rest of the car is made to come apart. And if all you plan on doing is head-on collisions and stuff like that, then this is the only car you'll ever need, but that's probably not going to be the case. Now, you go, you build a car like this, you start the first level, this comes up and it goes pretty well. I mean, all you gotta do is go 10 meters here, but as you can see, it smashes a wall and I guess the roll cage is kinda, sort of, intact. Maybe. How's my little robot? Let's zoom in here. How you doing? I think he's okay. He'll be fine. So now you'll go through a couple levels with this car, and all will be fine, aside from the downhill levels where apparently there's some kind of odd glitch that makes the car blow up on level stat. Don't ask me why this happens, I don't know, the game is an alpha after all, this doesn't happen with every vehicle. I noticed it seemed to happen with cars that have a lot of parts and pieces and is rigid like this one. So yeah. Now the problem that you're going to run into with this car is when you get to this level here, the Jump of Doom. Now this car can actually pass the test, as you're going to see here. The problem is, is... Well, actually, I'll let you see the problem for yourself. So we'll turn the power down here, because obviously you don't want to go full power into the jump. It doesn't matter what kind of car you have, it'll just destroy itself if you do. So we go, hit the jump, go up, and boom, wheels come apart. Okay. Now, obviously we've still passed the test, even though the wheels came apart, but this game, part of the fun of this game isn't just about building a car, it's about building a car that can either survive something or have a really spectacular crash. Now that crash was a lot cooler than that last one when the wheels just flipped off, to be honest. But let's say you actually want to survive the landing, even if it's not perfectly flat and smooth, and even if it is flat and smooth, you'll still pop the wheels off because the car is a skateboard and when you get to this level, crossing the chasm, then you're going to see why having no suspension causes a problem. Now turn the power down, get ready to hit the jump, and already the thing is like bouncing back and forth as soon as it hits the jump and then it's completely unstable, it doesn't land the ramp and smashes into the wall. Now granted there are other factors with this, the the weight of the car from front to back, the fact that all the rockets are on the back, but our main focus here is we want to build a car with a suspension. And the reason why you want to build a car with a suspension is for the level right before crossing the chasm, which is the S-turns. Now the S-turns here, I mean it doesn't look that bad, I didn't think so when I first did it. But now watch. around the corner, everything seems fine at first, but then you go take this next turn and the wheels just completely break apart. And you smash one wall, then you smash the next, and everything's in pieces. So you fail. And the whole reason is, is since there's no suspension, the car can't achieve any kind of speed without there being pressure on the wheels that cause them to snap off. So here is the second car I built. And as you can see, there's a bit of a suspension on it. There's the rear suspension, which is just a solid axle on the front here. You can see the wheels were attached to some struts. And then I have a solid axle in the middle with two um, braces to act as kind of strut rods attached behind it. But I'm going to pull those off for now and show you what happens when you just put them on struts and nothing else. And I'm also going to remove this bumper 
just so we can see everything. Now we start and just boom, it doesn't endo immediately. Now, generally, bad rocket placement could cause something like this, but in this case, there's a completely different reason. So we're going to go look at the replay. Now, as we watch the replay, we're going to get a close-up on the wheels as we go in slow motion. And we're going to see why it just immediately didn't endo. So now, here we go. We're going to zoom in a little more and hit play. And notice the suspension immediately compresses all the way. There's nothing holding the front weight of that car but those struts. So they immediately compress, and the wheels, they bend back with the wheels as the rockets push the car, and then it just endos. You need some extra support, because without any kind of support, then the struts are just going to sink right in and break off or bend or do whatever else they want to do. So here we are, back to the car. I'm going to pull this bumper off again. But now this time around, we're just going to leave the suspension the way I had it before with the solid axle in the middle and the two braces acting as strut rods and the rear suspension will leave it the way it is again because obviously that worked fine the first time. So we're going to take off and look, no endo, everything looks fine. We're going to take the first corner and nope, never mind, the wheel breaks off and now everything is going hardly wrong. And oh, it's still going. Is it going to stop? Yep, there we go. We're still, oh wait, nope, now, there we go, we got an endo in there and our little robot fell out and he's dead. So we failed. So, now, we want to take a look at the slow motion replay on the suspension of this and see why that broke apart so fast. It was even worse than the car with no suspension at all. So we're going to go in here and we're going to look and we're going to notice, see, that solid axle piece that I use is already broken going around that first corner. And now from there the structural integrity is gone. So basically the struts are now supported better so they're not sagging. But the struts have a lot of give and that axle has no give. So as soon as the suspension starts actuating, that solid axle snaps and then your structural integrity is about gone, everything is unstable, and then we get this awesome crash. So I guess if you want to make a crash like this, then yeah, use a solid axle and take the first corner. Otherwise, yeah, this is your result. So, now we're going to move on to my final design. Well, not my final design, I'm sorry. This is the last one I worked on the other day. I call it the bus, even though it's not really much of a bus, and it's not fast, it's big, heavy, and slow, but the reason I'm showing it to you is because this is the first vehicle I made where I tried out this suspension. Uh, I'm going to take the bumper, front bumper off to make it easy to see here. Now as you can see I still use the bracing to act as strut rods anchoring the struts to the back of the frame. Well, to a piece of frame in the back. However, notice I also have two pieces of cross bracing going up to the chassis above where the strut is mounted. And I thought of this thinking I actually have twin I-beam suspensions and Fords, but this doesn't actually work like a twin I-beam. Um, and then the rear suspension, I tried something different. Uh, this probably doesn't really matter. What's important is that there's some struts and a solid axle, and then I just added those other braces in a cross pattern rather than just straight braces. I don't think it matters for the rear suspension. The rear suspension isn't under the same load that the front is in cornering. So anyway, now we're going to go into the test run of this bus. So let's lower the power. This bus is a lot slower, so I mean, it was also easier to test. So we'll test with a smaller car after this. But first I'll just show you this vehicle, since I already know it works. And we'll take off. Hit this corner perfectly hit this corner perfectly or now a full bore for this thing and success no issues nothing's broken absolutely not a single thing so now I'm gonna retry this and I'm gonna purposely turn too hard so we're gonna take off I'm gonna let it build some speed 
change the arc that I take into this corner so that I can really take a stupidly sharp turn over here. And even though I'm doing this, the wheel isn't broken. In fact, there we go. It rolls over. It rolls over before the wheel can even break. So now we know the front suspension can handle the cornering. And I mean, even though it's not going as fast, this thing's a lot heavier. So consider that it held up to that. And now we look in the slow-mo replay of the suspension. As you can see, the struts are actuating and because it's all held together with braces instead of solid pieces the braces are giving it the sturdiness it needs without being too rigid so the suspension can still do its job no extra strain is being put on the wheels or any other particular part so it's all staying together and holding together for this run so you make it across the start finish line successfully Look at that, everything perfect, front and rear. And now, we're going to build an actual car, not a big stupid bus truck type thing. I'll actually keep the guy on the driver's side and everything, and that's how we build the front suspension. Now the struts, we have a small piece behind, so we have something at an even level. That way we can then take a brace and attach it. So we'll grab the brace and we'll attach from there and attach to there and then we'll do the same on the other side. And now that's braced up and now we'll spin this around oh, and we'll fix that a little there. That was looked odd. I'm OCD. Um, anyway, so now we'll do the cross braces like so. And then we just have to add the steerable wheels. Why is that not working? Oh, there we go. That's working. Alright, we got the steerable wheels. But, um, I don't like the height the driver's at. I actually want them more at the wheel level, closer to the ground. So I'm going to fix this real quick. And then cut back in. So, be back in a sec. Alright, there we go. I got the driver down further, and I added a front bumper, just for the heck of it and I'm probably going to remove those struts for the final, but for now let's build the rest of the car. Alright, let's do the rear suspension here. Rear suspension doesn't have to be as um, flexible. It's just, it's going to be actually probably better for it to be a little more solid. Uh, we'll do that X pattern again here. Do that. And then... We'll make it a bit more solid. Now you might want to end up in the final version doing a solid axle. because it might flex back a little bit too much when coming out of a corner. Anyway, so let's finish this rear bumper for now. And do a test. Here we go, around the corner fine. Around that corner fine. This one needs a little bit of fine tuning. It's a little bouncy, but... Oh yeah, the rear bumper just got damaged. Yeah, so the rear suspension would be probably better off with a solid axle. It'll will keep it from flexing back. So let's take a look at the slow-mo replay now and see what we got. Again, like I said, this one felt a little bit more squirrely, so I mean, I mean, again, part of it is the weight of the car and how things are set up, but at least you have, if, if you were having trouble getting a car to steer without it breaking apart, you now have a basic suspension to work off of. I'm sure there's better versions out there, or something you can make, but that's the fun in the game, is figuring it out. But for now, you have something basic to start with. I haven't seen any other videos on this or anything else on this, so... 
Now, if you were searching, you had something to reference. So, yeah, here, yeah, there we go. See the rear suspension bent back and whack the bumper once. I'm assuming, it, yeah, it does it again, and there we go. So, yeah, it kept hitting the rear bumper and breaking it. So you're better off it's, with that X bracing added a solid axle across to the rear wheels to keep it from bending backwards. Oh, there it goes. There was the final straw. It snapped the bumper off completely. That's probably part of the reason why it was a little bit more squirrely, too. So you just want to make the rear suspension a little bit more solid. Other than that, that's all I had to show you. You now, if you were just making solid wheels attached to a frame, so there was no suspension, your car was like a skateboard, so it wouldn't really steer well without braking, unless you went really slow, now you have something you can use.